who's not in mandatory minicamp in Seattle. DK Metcalf, we're all Uh-oh. we're all looking at Debo, Uh-oh. right? We spent the pre-draft looking at Debo and AJ Brown, right? Because Debo had asked for a trade. AJ Brown was not happy either. He wanted a contract, and the Titans traded him on draft night. How about that? Out of all the quarter, out of all the quarterbacks that. You know, want their money, and we were thinking might get traded, or wide receivers who wanted their money and thinking might get traded. It was AJ Brown who did. He's now in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia paid him. Part of the reason why they could pay him is because they had a contract um, available to give him for the amount of money he wanted, because they have a quarterback on his first rookie deal. That's what we were told. Hey, reason why A.J. Brown and raising her hand saying, we'll take him in Philadelphia. Reason why they didn't pay him that in Tennessee is because Tennessee has a quarterback in Ryan mm-hmm. Tannehill. Not on his first rookie deal, but they did uh-huh. <laughs> draft a rookie anyway, and we'll keep Here our we eyes go. on that as conditions warrant. But we're focused on D.K. Metcalf now because Debo is in camp holding mm-hmm. in, apparently. He's not holding out. He's showing up. Can't get fined. I'm, here. I'm just here so I won't get fined. He's got there the... Marshawn Lynch, because all he's caring about right now is his chicken. He's taking care of his chicken. Take care of his chicken. showing up so he won't get fined. So hell. And we'll hit on that later on. But DK's not there. What's up with that? DK not there. Now, he had foot surgery. Even if he was there, he couldn't practice, right? I mean, he's We're talking about foot. practice now? Not a, not a game. Not, not, not the game that I love. So why not show We're up? We're talking about practice. Knowing that. You're not going to practice anyway, right? You kind of have that medical excuse. Why isn't he there? Great question. I don't know. Part of the reason why we're having Albert Breer on the program. Mm-hmm. And that just leads me to believe this. Because the, the, the Seahawks don't have a quarterback on a long-term big fat deal anymore. They traded him away to Denver, didn't they? By the way, the Broncos have new ownership. Yes, they do. And um, it's the Walton family, and I'm not talking about John Boy from the 70s. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. I've dated myself with that reference. Ma, Pa, Thank John you. Boy. Yeah. Brockman has no idea what we're talking about. The Waltons were great. So, uh, where, wh- wh- you know, wh- what's up with that? Wh- why are the Seahawks holding off on paying DK? Are they? Is uh-huh. there something up with that? Great questions all around. So, let's stir it up a little bit. Here. Let's stir it. Let's stir Where this shit up. <laughs> could DK go? Let's stir it up. He's going to call John Schneider right now and offer something that he cannot refuse. <laughs> I've got a team to do it. Uh-oh. Now, look, Uh-oh. we DK Metcalf would improve the chances of any team winning, and that includes the Seattle Seahawks, <laughs> yeah. by the way. First and so, foremost. <laughs> but, I mean, if the Seahawks are raising this uh-huh. thing down to the ground. Yeah, they're not going to do much winning this If year. the Seahawks <laughs> are raising this thing uh-huh. down to the ground, and uh-huh. they swear that they're not. Let's go. go. Come on, Pete's come on, not Rich. sticking around, come still on, coaching, you know, to raise this thing down to the ground. He's always competing, and they, they can maybe stick around and hang in there to see if Baker – Pops free, Jimmy uh-huh. G and his surgically repaired shoulder yeah. pops free. Uh huh. But that doesn't really help us for this mode of a conversation. Uh-huh. I've got a team, and you can't. We're of not course, you got to say team. the Bills, obviously. Right. 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 We're not going to sit here and say the Chiefs or any other team in the AFC. Nobody right. cares. <laughs> nobody <laughs> cares. <laughs> we had Les Need on yesterday. Yeah, sure, there's room for one more. We'll figure it out. I'll kick over a rock. Obviously. We're going to keep drafting young kids so uh-huh. we can afford the big contracts mm-hmm. and afford the first and second round picks to be effed. Uh huh. <laughs> Which team do you think? Which team will get me the most a clicks? Time physical wide receiver on the outside. Hmm. Now it's time for the Dallas Disc. Go ahead, go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. Especially since they took their, for the last couple of years, number one wide receiver and sent him packing. Oh, I know. Oh, which team? We, which team used to have a very physical presence outside the numbers? 
Which going team? up top, and on occasion he would catch it. And while bringing it in, he would take a couple of massive large steps because he was a big physical human being <laughs> and gain about 10 yards on the play after the catch as he's going down to the ground, <laughs> which then would cause the ball to come loose. And back in the day, that rule that's currently on the books wasn't, and that was not a catch. Which team? You know, it's funny. Which Pete, team? Who's been raising his hand on, in my peripheral vision for the last team? Three seconds. Before, before you, when you got going, I thought you were talking about the team, what he's going to say, was playing that day. <laughs> um, Green Bay mm-hmm. getting DK Metcalf for Aaron Rodgers would be – Spectacular. Nice. I'm going to admit something. When you first started that, that's where I was going to say I the thought, Packers. I thought. Then as you went on, I'm like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> He's but talking about no, me. <laughs> because I'm trying to be realistic here. Yeah. That would be totally out of character for that team. I thought that's uh, where you were going at yes. first, though. Especially because they actually. The Green Bay Packers do not do that sort of maneuvering with future picks and things of that nature, although they do have a quarterback now with a remaining window, and Aaron Rodgers spoke yesterday about how... Young Wilson! Wilson! That would be a nice maneuver to do. But I am talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. <laughs> They're you know, always the talking five, about my Cowboys. About the 2022 <laughs> seasons that I have talked myself into quite a bit. Was it Dallas was three, the was Super Bowl, it, right? No, it's that Dallas is taking a step back. Dallas has taken a step back, and Philadelphia, with the aforementioned A.J. Brown, could take a, could zoom right uh, past huh. in that diamond HOV lane of the NFC East. Uh, it's huh. totally possible. Mm-hmm. Dallas should be on the phone to Seattle right now. They should be, How because I'd like to talk about it. Hey, Matt Calf be with the star on the side of his helmet. Well, he's going to be huge, regardless, because he's just How big, but... huge? I will repeat it. <laughs> and I do abri- appreciate your... Deflection. <laughs> and I do appreciate his star ability to make himself a figurative star wherever he goes. But the star on the side of that helmet, Thanksgiving days, mm-hmm. Monday nights, Sunday yeah. nights. DK Metcalf on the Dallas Cowboys is exactly what the, the media wants. That Jerry Jones would make. Exactly the play that Jerry Jones is built to make exactly the play the Dallas Cowboys used to do before Jerry started getting people with a little bit more of a long-term approach <laughs> talking. You mean like your son? <laughs> this is exactly the sort of stuff. He's the one who went and traded for Amari Cooper and gave up those picks. He's the one that has made maneuvers just like this. Like you mean Joey Jerry Galloway? He wants to win while... <laughs> He can, as we all know. He said that he told the good Lord before that winning that third Super Bowl that if he won that one, he wouldn't ask for another, and he wants to now redo that negotiation, <laughs> redo that deal. This is the deal to help renegotiate that deal. If it can be made, do it. Call him up. Get da- DK for Dak? Come on. Come, come, Dak come, to DK? Come. Oh, come come on. Yeah. You know, it's built for everything. It's, it's built for DK everything. DK and Dak. The DK only thing missing in DK is the A from Dak. Oh. Right? The A. Oh. Oh. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I Are you so picking TJ? I got a pair of brand new Jordans on right now, and I'm picking them up and putting them down, Rich. How do we make first that round, happen? First Rick? round pick. How do we make oh, that First shit. round pick. Oh, shit. Right? Gonna be picking like the 20s. first round pick, but yeah, since, that's a pick in the twenties. Mm-hmm. Since the draft already thinking, happened, do you think that that's something that they or would do? it's thirty second overall because what? Dallas can actually do it? What? Them, right? Since you think that they can win the Super Bowl, Dak, DK CD, C D Dak, <laughs> DK CD Gallup, Zeke, Pollard, and Your on boy. the other side, oh yeah, Micah. Right. Ernest Ellsbury. And Shout out to Ernest. Mr. Diggs. Okay. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Dallas. 
Hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Joe Boo and Joe Bear's Sports Report. Because without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, you know that this literally doesn't work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Man, I don't know how to feel right now. I don't know how to feel right now. The Dallas Cowboys, you know, huh? What? 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 What's that? Oh, our valley's going nuts. Oh, man, what does that do for me? <laughs> Everything's going up. Okay, you know, it was one hundred and fifty dollars to fill up the truck. Okay, <laughs> you know, you know, the damn ink for the the printer. The damn ink cost two hundred dollars to get the the XL because you can't get the XL. Two hundred. It's like damn, the printer was only four hundred dollars when I bought it years ago. Two hundred dollars for the damn ink. So big deal. So of course the Dallas Cowboys are worth more money. Hell, as much time as we all talk about the Dallas Cowboys, of course they're worth more. But you know something we don't talk enough about here. It's the ladies. And the first one here before the show even started was Joanne Gonzalez. What's up, JoJo? Uh-oh. It's Jennifer O'Jenny. Jenny, I lost my favorite penny. So she gave me a, no, I gave her a dollar. She kissed me and I hollered, oh, okay. All right. And I know there's Gina Thorne. What's up, Gina? How you doing, Gina? And of course, ooh wee, it's Miss Hot Sauce. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, I know this is not my normal time. It's not my normal night. It is Thirsty Thursday, and um, I didn't do a live stream last night, but I said I was going to do um, a live stream each day to give away a piece for our brother, Stuart. And um, God, this is hard. Today, when I, 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 I've been out, with the wife, because my wife's like, you need some other shoes, because your, your your shoes you wear all the time, you're not going around people and, and wearing those shoes. So we, we get, you got to go get some new shoes. All right, and she's like, you know that hair, you, you need to get a haircut too tomorrow too, because you, you can't go down there with your hair like this, so, you know, and, and things. So you know, it's like, okay, honey, so I'll get a haircut tomorrow too, and then um, we had to go pick up some ink for the printer and some t-shirts and all that. So we were running around and stuff. My and the sunset back. Oops, Rich, the shut up. It. Shut up, Rich. Now I'm the sunset. The colors were so bright for about two minutes. The purplish hues with the red, and there was just enough. It was just like we were just driving over, and we just hit it at just the perfect time. And I swear, as I'm going through, kind of tired of running around and like I don't want to get I, my shoes are comfortable. You know, when you get a pair of shoes, they may look like hell. But they feel good. You get a nice looking pair of shoes. You know, they're new. You got to break it. Man, my, you know, my feet, I, I got Fred Flintstone feet and they're flat and it's hard on new shoes, man. OK, it, it's hard on new shoes. But, you know, it, it, I guess it's better to look good than to feel good. I, I'm sorry. I'm about feeling good. And I feel good when I got like, you know, a worn out shirt because the worn out shirt, it's nice and soft. Right. Because, you know, it's, it's kind of frizzled and kind of like fuzzy. Right. The shoes, you know, they're kind of raggedy, so they breathe better because they let air and stuff in it. You know, I feel comfortable. I'm satisfied myself because I feel good. But, you know, that's not how it goes when you're a married man. But I felt like that sunset was Stuart looking down and saying, take care of mama. And I appreciate you. So I'm excited about doing this and giving back. And I'm sad because Stuart's not there. So what we're doing, Mark Hutton, oh, got gotcha. you. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do what I can to give back, and that's where I've been giving away one of these a day. So we're going to give away right there. Um, today's giveaway will be the 88, the original 88 with the Hail Mary. And I got a bunch of these that we got to pack up tomorrow and get going. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking because I was getting all my tools together for the trip and I'm looking, I've got a lot of tools. And then I'm thinking it's going to be a, oh, damn, Terry Lee. Damn. Terry Lee. And Terry, Mike has set up 
the cutter for Nancy and the star for you. Shout out to Terry Lee with the. <laughs> oh. Shout out to Terry Lee. So I'm sitting here looking at all the tools that we got to put in the RV and we've got, you know, seven people are going to be in the RV and I'm thinking, do I want to take my fryer deep fryer down to Texas where it's going to be hot as hell? There's a heat wave that's coming through. So it's supposed to be like a hundred degrees every day and see my bitch ass is used to like today is like 78 degrees. It, you're lucky if it's 78 degrees at night. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to be cooking on the deep fryer on there. So I was thinking that since Brian Green, Brian Green, and I know Brian's excited because he's like, what time you want me to, what time, what, you know, I was like, you know, you, you probably want to get through, you know, DC traffic early. So get me here before rush hour stuff. And, you know, I, I think he's going to be leaving at like 6 a.m. <laughs> or so because I think he's really excited. So I was saying maybe what I'll do is I'll get a box of wings tomorrow and what i'll do is i'll just cook like 20 pounds of wings uh tomorrow night we'll do a hot wing challenge because gina will be here and her kids will be here and and we'll take some wings with us i'll cook them like first thing in the morning we'll put them in the rv so we'll have them for a couple days then that'll save more space for tools because we got lots of tools that we need to 108 man and you know and you know what here's what's oh my god And, and i got another story for you too so randy um, I think of things at the last minute and I meant to do something about this before because I wanted to do some shirts for the trip for, for everybody. And I forgot about it cause I've been just going around and doing all this different stuff. And so I talked to my wife yesterday morning. I sent her the, the print that I want to put on there. She called the t-shirt place and the t-shirt place is like, Oh yeah, we can do this. And so I was like, okay, I need 26. And they're like, Oh we can only do about five or six here. We have to do that from our main office, which means you won't get them till Monday. So it's like crap. So my wife is actually going to do some. So we looked at buying one of these machines that you can do the vinyl pieces that you, that you buy the heat press and stuff. And we were going to buy one of those tonight, but they were out of stock of it. So then she's going to go ahead and take care of stuff. So I'm buying all the shirts and I'm just kind of guesstimating, right? Cause this, this is how, you know, things are going good. So I said, like, you know, it's like, honey, you know, I'm 2XL. Okay. I said, I said, I'm 2XL. Michael's like 1X. I said, I think Brian Green and Mark Torres. I said, I think they're probably like, like large maybe or so. And I said, looking at Randy, I said, Randy's probably like, you know, he's like, like maybe XL. And I said, his son's probably XL too. And while we were there in the store looking at the t shirts and all that, I saw some 3XLs because 3XLs, you know, you go online to try and order 3XL shirts you know, print it. Most places don't have them because people say, Hey, I want to get, th-. I was like, I, I, they don't have, it cause I, I was trying to get three XL for a Philly 500. The only thing they had three XL was a sweatshirt. So Philly was like, Oh, you're a bastard. You're sending me a sweatshirt to wear and it's a hundred degrees outside. I'm going to sweat my ass off. It's like, that's the only thing I could get in three XL, but they had two there. And I said, honey, I'm going to buy these two three XLs because you never see them. And then you let me know. <laughs> I was just like, how does that happen? It, 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 it was the power of Stu looking down and, and all this. So everything is working out, getting together. The RV, we were supposed to be able to get at 2 o'clock. I said, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please. Is there any way we could get it earlier? So we're getting it at 10 o'clock. So hopefully we'll be on the road by 12. Okay. Enough of this because all y'all like, I thought this was a Dallas Cowboys show. Well, it is a Dallas Cowboys show. And guess what? We going to be in Dallas while they're having minicamp. We're going to be in Dallas while they're having minicamp. We're going to go see the star. We'd show it to you, but you can't take pictures of it. We're going to go down and fulfill Stewart's wishes. We're going to take care of mama. In the meantime, The Dallas Cowboys, it's kind of funny when you hear everybody proclaim the Dallas Cowboys haven't been relevant for 25 years. They pound it in our head every single day. If they're talking about you every day, every time somebody is a free agent, every time something happens, 
the Denver Broncos get bought, and there's articles that say the Cowboys are now worth more money. DK Metcalf doesn't show up to training camp, and Rich Eisen says, Jerry Jones, pick up the phone. Call Seattle. The Philadelphia Eagles bring in more players. The Dallas Cowboys have lost a bit. How is it that we are irrelevant if we're talked about every single day? Kansas City, you know, they've been to two Super Bowls winning one. Dan, 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 dan. Damn, da 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 Gina. Da da da. Damn, Gina. Shout out to Damn Gina, um, who will be helping along with her daughter as well as her boyfriend, who is graduating school tomorrow and going to be here tomorrow night to help go down. So shout out to him. So how is it that the Dallas Cowboys are a nobody? They're constantly talked about. They're talked about more than the Rams, who are the Super Bowl champions. They're talked about, you know, Tom Brady had, you know, Tampa Bay orange hair today. How many people are talking about Tampa Bay orange hair for Tom Brady? Oh, okay. I sure can, Brad. Hold up. Let, let me grab the, the light. There we go. I, I get away from home one day and I forget my, what I'm doing. Um, how is it they're always talking about us? Anytime anybody's a free agent, up oh, Cowboys, he perfect fit for the Cowboys. That's what the Cowboys used to do. That's what Jerry Jones used to do, right? That, that's just what they do. That's what they do. So, for us, more importantly, the news of the day: a couple things. Well, Matt Shelby, here's the thing: is it's a waiting game. Anthony Barr wants one year, ten million dollars. The Cowboys. Or cheap. Kathy, you yeah, may love going to Stuart's mama's house, but I need to know. Oh, okay, Kathy. Shout out to Kathy. Um, I, let me, uh, I haven't been able to check my emails and keep up, but Kathy, let me, I got to get the address again myself. Um, I'll get back to you tomorrow sometime, okay? Or just email me one more time and say, hey, jackass, I've been emailing you. I'm trying to help, okay? So definitely, email me one more time and I'll get it from you. Um, yeah, I lost where I was. Anthony Barr. He wants a one-year deal, which means you can't spread that money out. So it would be a $10 million cap hit. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, their leverage just kind of got lost a bit because now um, Devontae Bond, and, I'm up, and I bet a lot of you are like, Who? Devante Bond, who was basically at this moment looked at as the weak side starting linebacker. Devante Bond, who has about 39 tackles where he played with uh, Tampa Bay. And if you haven't, don't know who that is, that's where the problem is. The Dallas Cowboys don't have a lot when it comes to linebackers right now. The linebacker room, let me pull this one over here. Here was the ESPN depth chart for our linebacking situation. Okay, let's flip the camera here. Um, weak side linebacker, bam. Devontae Bond, he was penciled in early as you started. So weak side, Luke Gifford is the next man up, who has been a special team standout but doesn't have a lot of experience as a starting linebacker. Aaron Hansford is the next guy. And do you see right here? There is nobody after that. So take Devontae Bond, who is now severe knee injury, gone for the year. You got two weak side linebackers technically on the roster. Now, that's not saying that the Cowboys can't rotate, but they can. Now, here's the next problem. Middle linebacker, Leighton Van Der Resch, Leighton Van Der Resch, who sometimes gets hurt. Behind him, Devin Harper. Are you saying right now, who? Who? Devin who? Exactly. Not much experience. Behind that, 
Demaine Clark, who may actually have to play at some point this year if the neck heals. Okay. Now, of course, strong side linebacker, Micah Parsons. Okay. Jabril Cox coming off of ACL surgery. And Stoney Jackson. And that's not like Stoney, like, like I love weed. Okay, or maybe it is. You can do that these days. So you look at this and say, you don't have experience. The only experienced linebackers you have are Leighton Van Der Esch and Micah Parsons. Everybody else is an unknown quantity. And if anybody else gets hurt, we're screwed. Look, and Brian Green has been shot. Look, Brian. Hey, Brian, <laughs> you ready for some hot wings tomorrow night? Uh, okay, not not severely hot. Not not to kill you ones. I, I, I'll, I'll just, maybe a couple drops. I won't won't do like I do. Okay, the Cowboys definitely need to be in a market for a linebacker. There's no if ands or buts about that. They definitely have to look at getting a linebacker sooner than later and get him in the fold. Um, another interesting piece that I really enjoyed seeing today. From Mike Fisher, who was there at the Star, okay? He was talking about the Vanilla Gorilla. The Vanilla Gorilla. Ooh-wee. John Ridgewood, who did kind of a John Jay Rambo in practice. We talking about practice, not a game, not, not, not a game. The guy who said, I'm here to break some necks. And it's hot in Texas. And I think I'll cool down by eating a couple of cows. I like the attitude. Like the attitude. Like the breaking some necks. Not physically. I mean, don't actually break people's necks. Okay. Don't, don't. Okay. Just, he, he's just being colorful there. Okay. He got into a fight today in practice. They dusted up in practice that's not supposed to be physical. Ooh. Yeah. That's a big boy. He's there trying to stake his claim. Shout out to Stewart. Stewart didn't fall. Stewart didn't blink. Look like 88 dropped it. He pulled a Dez there. He is staking his claim and saying, hello, I'm getting me some on this team. And if you don't like it, they're fighting words. <clears throat> I love it. I absolutely, positively love it. Michael Gallup. <clears throat> could this be, could this B, finally, the Cowboys are underselling something and going to over-deliver. Michael Gallup seems to be, you know, last week we saw him just on the bands, just going straight ahead on the bands, doing work. Today we saw him going side to side with the bands. It seems like Michael Gallup is progressing really quickly. And maybe, just maybe, who knows? Maybe, because he was looking pretty, pretty good. Maybe he's not that far off of actually being able to be ready for practice. Not, 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 not a game. Not a game. We talking about practice. John Kevin Green Ridgeway. There you go. Shout out to Kelvin Green. Man, I can't believe he went. Man, we've lost so many people, so many greats this past couple of years. Um, do not sign Anthony Barr. I'm telling you, telling you no. Um, I have two reams, teams to root for, the Vikings and the Cowboys. Trust me, Barr is like Woods, frustrating. Well, right now, Cowboys' cupboard is bare. Cowboys' cupboard is bare. I, I, I'm just saying, we got to do something. I mean, we got Luke Gifford and, and, and uh, Aaron ha Hansford, okay? But we'll see. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Uh, do you think the NFL will get us, um, get, you know what, Willie, of course they probably will. I mean, you know, Washington ends up having people uh, fighting and running into each other trying to get uh, Carson Wentz's bad passes, and Carson Wentz all of a sudden 
Didn't look so good. Um, did not look so good in practice yesterday. And of course, Jack Del Rio kind of put his foot in his mouth a little bit yesterday. Um, and basically the state of Virginia said, thanks, but no thanks. We're not giving you any money to try and help you build a stadium because you're not really a viable franchise. Knowing that the Denver Broncos just sold for almost $5 million for Virginia to say, Washington, you suck. You're a bad investment says a hell of a lot that says, wow. So that's where we are, at least right now with everything that is the Cowboys. I'm not going to be in here long tonight because I've got more work to do in the workshop, getting ready for the trip. And I've got to start getting all this stuff together. I got some equipment that uh, my man, Brian Green said, bring plenty of microphones. Um, Unfortunately, I can't take this computer and I'm not in a spot where I can buy another laptop so i've got to figure out some things i got to do some checks so don't be surprised if from time to time i go live just doing a text a test here or there and in the meantime we're going to go ahead and get our giveaway out here because that's what i said we're going to do so while we're doing that you know what we always like to do you know you know what we like to do I fire Howie. Fucking fire that motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amore Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. You. <laughs> oh, Philly, we love you. Uh, Kat, let me. Um, Got to put all these in here before we do our drawing. Kathy stands. Um, interesting thing. <clears throat> Damn, Gina. Randy sets uh, states um, is what we're hearing, not from us. This is from Philadelphia people that are talking about Hertz and AJ Brown seeming to have hard times um, connecting Terry Lee. And um, they're hoping that they'll get together and get it right. But so far hasn't been that great. Mark Hutton, Ernest Ellsbury, shout out to all you great people. Um, Cowboy VA, because these are people that also donated on the GoFundMe since I was here. Matthew uh, Caver, Alonzo Esperanza. Look, all the Eagle fans, there. hey, damn, Gina. Alonzo, oh, I got that, okay. Edward uh, Hardman, Brittany Ruiz. Ooh. Deborah Collins, so many wonderful people. Anna Lechner, C.C. Chen, Colin Ford, and Jamie Keith. All right, so we're going to put those in there. He got kicked. Oh, yeah, Thomas Garrett. He got kicked out of practice. Yeah, I like that. I like because that, that's some attitude is back. Lord Nova, Lord Nova, thank you for coming on over. Oh, wait a minute. Two of these stuck together. Young Wilson! Wilson! All right. So let me get these up in here. And Mike, don't let me forget to bring the hopper. I, I have to bring, don't let me forget to bring them. All right. What's that? Okay. Okay, well, that's where you need to remind me on. Okay, all right, we got them all in there. We need that wake-up, Mark. Okay. I agree with you. I, I like attitude, man. You know, I, I don't like Camp Cupcake, you know. I like people to be out there fighting for jobs, fighting for uh, 
positions and things. All right, here we go. We're going to grab one. Round and round, round and round. Okay. Mix it up real good. Okay. All right. We, we got one. Boom. Now, you guys need to sign a new GM, but we all know that will never happen. Joseph Hudson. Joseph Hudson, you win the original 88 who fell down. Let, let me grab it. Boom. Bam. This is the one that you won here. Boom. Jalen Hurts stinks. So... What do I do with the ticket? Where did the ticket go? Hold it. Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. I'm losing my mind here, guys. So this one goes to Joseph Hudson. So Joseph Hudson, email me, CowboysMark94 Gmail, so we can get that to you. Reports say Zeke is slimming down and Dak is bulking up. Okay. Mark does. Filthy, I do what? Oh, Lord Nova, Lord Nova, thank you. You're in for the next go-round. Appreciate everybody. Yeah, Ray, I'm back home for tonight and tomorrow night, and then we hit the road again to give back. Or is Pollard the guy? Um, it's not one or the other. It's going to be both. We're going to have both of those guys beasting for the Cowboys. Just packing, Thomas Garrett, getting ready for the trip for Stu. Yeah, uh, Gina, it's going to be hot. And um, we're going to be going to Stewart's memorial service on Wednesday night. Um, that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard going down there and and having talked to him. It's... It's it's crazy because I got used to uh, from Stuart and I started talking almost on a daily basis back last summer when he was in the hospital for um his foot his foot had to be um, partially amputated and. He was in the hospital back and forth, and they were doing arterial surgery. I think he had two or three of those um, to try and open up the arteries so the blood would flow and, and things. But him and I got talking every day about, you know, well, football uh, and, and, and his condition and things. And the thing that would always kind of seem to make him feel better or, or turn the conversation a little bit was – we start talking about football and fantasy football and what the Cowboys should do and something stupid I said and he disagreed with and stuff like that. But there's a void now of my day not talking to him. There really is. I wish that we had, I wish we had gotten this thing together sooner. But I had so many things to try and do. He originally wanted us to come down on the 27th um, for his birthday. And, you know, so then we started looking at saying, okay, we're trying to push it off for his birthday. And, um, man, we just missed it. But we're going to do what he wanted us to do. And he loves his mother, and he wants to make sure that she's comfortable. And we're going to do that. And because of you guys, we're going to be able to. I have so many people to thank for this trip. Um, from David Wiley, he's like, man, I'm going to cook some food for you guys to take on the road. And, um, all the donations, all the kind words, the volunteers. You know, Kathy Stern says she's going to show up um, to help out. Um, Mark Torres bringing food over and going to let us use his excursion to go back and forth and things. Uh, 
Randy Sutz states and Brian Green taking a week of their life out to help somebody that they don't know. It's actually a beautiful thing when we see all the nastiness and hatred that's going on in the world. I'm glad we're trying to do something positive. So I appreciate y'all. I'm going to go up here because i got a lot of work to do to get ready for this. And don't worry, we're going to be still covering the Cowboys, and we're going to be covering this event as well. Um, and I hope you guys come along for the ride, and um, maybe just maybe we'll see you. What I'm going to do, and I need to do this on a regular, but Michael ha- has forgot to remind me, is I have these damn stress footballs right here. And on them they say, Spread the mojo. I'm going to keep a bag full of these in the RV and in the car. So that way, if you happen to see us and you say, Mark Holmes, we'll give you one of these so you can keep spreading the mojo. And with that being said, let's have some fun. <laughs> oh, big run. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, shit. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he Oh, oh, uh, now you about to lose his mind. He hasn't seen the play yet. He hasn't seen the play yet. Show me something like that. What is it? Actually, before I get out of here, let me give actually a really special, special. Thank you out there for our newest channel member, Stephanie States, um, because she is allowing her husband and her son to come out, come down here with us to help out to get this thing together, um, to let your loved one go. That is big. Or is it one of those ones? I could really use a break. Honey, why don't you go down to Texas for a week? <laughs> But no, shout out to you. I appreciate you so much for allowing your husband to do this because we could not do it without all the wonderful people that have uh, jumped in and helped and been a part of all this. And so with that being said, get your shot glass ready so we can toast to Stuart.
Thank you, everybody. It's time to turn out the lights. This party's over, and I'll see you soon. Say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over. And tomorrow and next year starts the same old thing again. Yeah.